Hey everyone, welcome back to Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab a model, grab some paints, and paint along with me. Today I'm just going to be working on some bases for a couple models that I've been painting recently. I realize they haven't been based yet, so I might as well get them based before starting on next week's, you know, Painting with Jay model. And uh, so yeah, let's get on some models, talk about life, and the busyness of life, and all that good stuff. So let's go get painting. Hey everyone, so welcome back. It is time to paint with Jay. I'm wearing a glove because I was just doing some airbrushing. As always, having fun, airbrushing, yeah. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So today I'll be working on the base for this Dimacaron. It's now completely done. Ooh, look at him. He's all good, ready for the tabletop. Dimacaron, Dimacaron. He was a lot of fun to paint up. So the other day, I actually had a really... I've had a terrible week in a lot of respects, but it's okay. You know what? I move on. I'm going to keep being positive and... Yeah. Let's just say that. But it's been a bad week, unfortunately. I really wish I could just report on awesome weeks, you know. But some weeks are better than others, as you know, and life happens. You know, that's the one thing about life. You know it's it happens, and it's random sometimes, and... It sucks sometimes. I've had, I've had a bad week, but it's okay. So earlier in the week, I actually was painting. This is one of the fun... This is a funny story, actually, but it's it was fun. So I was painting. I put this up on Facebook. For those of you who know, you should follow me on Facebook. Either uh, just jadedproductions.com. But, uh, or Jaded Productions. But um, I was painting, and I had a dropper bottle of soft body black. And I squeezed too hard and got stuck, something stuck in it all of a sudden, and it shot out. You know, like, I don't know if you guys have had that experience, but um, the lid popped off and it shot everywhere. I mean, across, it looked like a pink grenade went off in my room. Like, I, I should show you guys the, the work on uh, what it did to this room. It was hilarious, but except it got on, it got on like 28 models, I counted. Drops everywhere. 28 models had to be fixed. So, yeah, and most of them weren't even my models, unfortunately. I was, I'm painting some for a friend. And, but um, yeah, it was really brutal. Um, that was not cool. So, teaches you a lesson. Don't use superhuman strength when um, using sweet dropper bottles, drop eyedropper bottle. Um, yeah, so that was pretty, pretty bad. As I said, so it ruined it. It got on a lot of stuff, um, but it happens, you know. And right now, I am just trying to figure out what I want to do with life, because I want to keep making videos and I want to keep doing it. Just life keeps throwing curveballs at me. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's been a, a tough week financially. It's been a tough week, and uh, it happens, unfortunately. But as I said, I'm going to keep making videos for y'all. I just want to do it for a living. One day, I will. You know, if you want to, this is not a, a commercial for Patreon, but if you want to go do it, go check it out. I'm going to put this in all my videos now. I'm going to put my Patreon link. People keep telling me I should, so I'm going to. Um, because... Yeah, if anybody wants to, you know, the, the higher my goal gets, or not higher my goal, the higher my amount gets, the more I can focus on just videos. And everyone's been wanting me to bring back How to Play 40K, and I will. I just, when I have the time to film it. These days go by so fast. And by the way, I'm sorry I'm not painting with my wife today. She's unfortunately gone today. She had to work. Um, she had last week off, but she might have some more Thursdays off in the future. She usually doesn't. That's why she doesn't participate in painting with Jay. Um... But she did last week, and we had a great time. It was an awesome time painting with her, and I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. The painting with Jay and Jay's wife. And, uh... Jay and Yay. Um, we had a great time. You know, she loved her painting her My Little Pony, or Pony, I guess, is Pony-esque model that I got from her, got for her from Impact Studios at uh, Adepticon. And, uh... Yeah, I'm glad she really enjoyed painting. I got her a few little other little ones that she'll be painting up in future painting with Jays. So that's good. Yeah, as I said, but it's okay. You know, as I said, life goes on. You just got to keep moving on, and uh, yeah. But uh, I think this is going to be a pivotal year in a lot of ways 
uh, my career wise and stuff. I hope this is a pivotal year. Um, what other things are in the news? Uh, don't know what that was. Um, And you hear weird sounds around you. I think it's my wife rooting the takes. No, she can't be. She's at work. Hmm. I don't know. She's still at work for another hour. It's okay. Weird takes, weird sounds. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, new AdMech codex, of course. Check out my review if you haven't checked it out. It's a cool codex. I want to collect AdMech, but I can't afford it right now, so in the future. It'll be the first new army I collect. Cool. First layer done. Um, yeah, Admech was a cool, cool army. Rubik, are you okay? Yeah. Here's the other bit model I'm, I'm going to work on in the base today. So, uh, Admech's a cool army. And they're, uh, they're fun. They're, it's an interesting army. I think it'll be fun standalone army. Because they have a lot of interesting stuff. They're going to die quickly. They're, they don't have a lot of big, tough things. I found it's a pretty soft, like, squishy codex in the sense that, like, they have a 6 of Feel No Pain, but they have a Toughness 3. So the Toughness 3 is not going to go uh, that far. And uh, they're not going to survive that long. So. I hear gangster music in the background. It's kind of fun. Yeah, so... I think it's a cool codex. Uh, this week's painting tutorial on the warp, in case you want to go check it out. I painted up a dude from uh, the... What's it called? It's Wrath of Kings. Uh, the Nazir starter set. The uh, One of the Ashman Swordsmen. So, cool. He's a really cool guy. He's wearing like a devil's mask. He's like a devil mask samurai guy. So he's a cool tutorial. So go check out the war if you want to see him. Um, I will eventually, hopefully, be making painting tutorials for free again. Um, it looks like, well, my goal, like, I'm, I'm ha over halfway to my goal for making free tutorials again. Uh, once a month, probably. So, on my, my Patreon page. So, that'll be good. So hopefully in the next like month or so, probably I'm guessing June. Well, I'll start making free tutorials again. That'll be cool. So let's just paint it up. One a month, but still. You know what? It would be good to make. Um, I I miss making free tutorials. I really do because I really you know I don't. I feel guilty sometimes putting them all in the warp, but it it's where the 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 pay channel is. You know. And at least I still put uh, Miniature Pain 101, which in my opinion is the best series I produce. It's my, it's the one I'm most proud of. Um, in for free, just the people in the warp get a, uh, a preview, unless you see what happened this week, for example. It's happened to me before as well. My computer is so slow sometimes, it looks like from a first glance that I'm uploading to one website, uh, one YouTube page, when I'm actually uploading to a different one. And it happens occasionally. I've done it twice where I've uploaded a free video to the warp and then I just can't, you know, kill it quickly and then re-upload it to, for free. Uh, but a couple times it's happened where I upload a warp video for uh, for free. And that was part 81 of Miniature Painting 101 this week, how to paint uh, black, gray, and white hair. And uh, it was quite funny, so I didn't realize it until the next day, and by that point I already had like 500 views. Um, and people were like, interesting! We get a preview. 
And it's okay with me. You know, when it was a mistake, it happens, and if anything, you now see what's in the world. You know, it's cool. I'm, it's, it's, there's 20, what are we at, 54? We're part 54, I think, for free. So there's like 27 or 28 episodes of Miniature Painting 101 in the world. And they'll come out eventually for free. That's cool. As I said, that's, it, it, it balances my, my thoughts when I do that. Because, as I said, Miniature Painting 101, I really love Miniature Painting 101. Now, obviously, some people really love the start to finish painting tutorials. Because they're awesome. It's, not, it's really cool to see a model go from primed to completion. Um... And I agree, that, that's, that's true. That is really cool. And uh, so that's why I want to eventually hopefully bring them back one a month. It'll probably be 40k related because, to be fair, the majority of my audience is 40k. And the majority of my painting controls are 40k as well. So, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that'll hopefully happen. At the rate it's going, hopefully June. Um... What else? I may be heading to Boston in September. I'm going to Indianapolis in late July, or early August. But it looks like I might, not for sure, but I might be going to Boston in September. Boston. Uh, so I'm going to see if there's any other conventions in that area in, during while I'm there, and maybe go to a wargaming convention or some local stores. That'd be cool. Meet some people. And apparently, there's a new Eldar Codex on its way, and it's on its way soon. Which is just weird, like, G GW's now going at rapid fire. This is awesome. Like, how many codices in the last few, in the last two months? This is going to be, like, number four? You know, that's a lot of codices. And it's going to be Eldar. And I'm hoping Eldar kind of get, n not nerfed into the ground, but they need to be balanced, unfortunately. Because they need to be brought into the 7th edition, where most armies are balanced, uh, with the meta, I find Necrons are pretty powerful if you run them insanely, you know, strong detachments. But of course, I can't do that in my battle reports yet. I've ordered, people, I've ordered two sets of, um, oh, I've heard their names. Whatever they are called. The Necron guys that I need to make my formations. Um, so I ordered two boxes of them. And when they come, they'll hopefully be here any day. I think they might arrive today, I think. Um, I should double check that. And when that comes, yay, Jay's going to be happy. Because then I can make the, my formations and play with the detachment, the Recurian detachment, in my battle reports. Because then that way people can see that if the, I want to test the true strength of the Necron. Um, yeah, so... And Tyranids are coming along as well. I got some Tyranids coming along. Mm, I don't probably want to see the white. So, yeah, my Tyranids army, man, they're coming along quite well. I'm happy with where they are at now. I'm, uh, it's been a lot of work on them. I have, you know, it's been a lot of work on these guys, and it's really paying off. The thing is, I still have like about hmm, 30 more mo 40 more models to paint for Tyranids, maybe 50. So, 50 more models. And then, Tyranids are done. And I'm going to take a break from Tyranids probably. I want Actually, there's still a few Tyranids I want to pick up. I want to buy the new box of three Zoanthropes. And I want to buy maybe a couple more drop pods of the spore pods. Um, because they're awesome, and I think they're going to be cool in battle reports as well, and, and yeah. Um, but eventually, for orcs, more grot tanks. Until I have my, I need two more boxes of grot tanks. Because then I'll have. Uh, oh, by the way, the first battle report came up with grot tanks. It, it's in the warp. No, it isn't. It's going to be for free. In fact, it should be up today. Never mind. So my Grot Tanks were in that battle report. It was a really fun battle report. I played with um, with John, the Space Wolves player, Hugh, which is who's a Necron player, and Michael, who's another Orc player. 
Um, we had a great time. The grad tanks were fun. They're not the, the strongest thing, but oh my goodness, they're fun. I love the random movement distances. That's always cool. Um, they, were, they just moved 2d6 and fire is normal. And I like the fact they have a 5 up invul. I couldn't roll one for my life during this battle report. You'll see it, but... Uh, I know I should, probably should have made this base a little bit more interesting, but uh, I want the attention to be on the Diamond Karen itself. So, you know, it already has a bit of terrain on it. And, uh, yeah. With each model, I like to try something new. And with this guy, I was just trying different, uh, I was trying different varnishes. See if I get effect. So I see he's much shinier on his carapace and all the armor parts. I was using a gloss var a gloss varnish and a satin on his uh, body. Just try different effects on Tyranids and stuff. He's a really cool model. One of my favorite Forge World models. Um, yeah, he's cool. He's an interesting guy. I'll have to to try him out. I should do a lot more grass or a lot more snow. This is just basically marking where the snow is going to be. And what I do is I just paint, you know, that way it's white and it doesn't uh, yellow as much. This might be a shorter video. Because uh, I didn't really, re I thought it was going to take me a lot longer to paint this stuff. That's okay. When my wife gets home later from work, we're going to be painting a, uh, looks like a face. I should fix that. Um, when my wife gets home later, we'll be filming a battle report. Uh, Imperial Knights, which I don't have. All, I don't have a full like fifteen hundred. It's like thirteen hundred of Imperial Knights and uh, versus Necrons. We're gonna test Necrons out without the recurring detachment because I obviously I don't have. Unfortunately, guys, and we'll retry it out later with the recurring detachment. See how much that five up and the four up change. Obviously, I think it'll change a lot. But Neck runs in cover, doing a lot of DACA against Imperial Knights. We'll see how they stand up and who wins and really cool stuff. So that's the parts done. Let's get some snow. Good, got some snow flock. What the flock? <laughs> Bad joke, I'm sorry. Um... Oh, need some more glue. All right. So, actually, I'll mix glue while we're talking. This is exciting painting with Jay. Mixing glue. And what I typically do is I do a two to one mix of uh, just PVA glue and water. I have, a, I have a large glue, and I just mix it in a smaller container. That way it's, uh, it's easier to go. And, uh, yeah, by the way, people, a lot of people have been asking me lately, I've gotten messages about and stuff, what do I think of Ash leaving Mini Wargaming? Because obviously I used to work for Mini Wargaming as well. And unfortunately, I really have no comment. I never knew Ash. And, um, I did, I don't know what he, why he quit. I, I'm pretty sure he quit. I don't know. As I said, anything I'm saying is just speculation. So I'm not going to really address it. Um, uh, you know, I'm not a wuss or anything. I just have no idea. And if I, I don't want to, I don't want to involve myself in something that really does not involve me at all. Um, mini Wargaming, uh, obviously I used to work there, but Ash was my replacement, and I thought he was awesome. I really liked Ash. He kind of became my favorite employee of Mini Wargaming. So it's kind of unfortunate to see him leave, or I don't know. As I said, I don't know the conditions of him leaving, if he was let go or not. I have no idea, and uh, I just wish him well. And apparently his Kickstarter Indiegogo is doing very well. And he's going to do a co-op or something like that. He's doing a co-op with, with Owen, actually, from uh, Gaming with the Cooler. Another former employee of Mini Wargaming. And hopefully that works out. 
you know, I wish them all the well. And as, as I wish Mini Wargaming well. As I'm not, I don't have any knowledge whatsoever on it. It's, um, all I say is it's unfortunate because I think the, the, the public really liked Ash. But uh, that's okay. I can still see Ash in videos like when I left Mini Wargaming. People were, some people were sad. And uh, now I can see me in my, my own videos. And you know what? It's all good, you know? It's all good. So I wish Ash well. I wish Mini Wargaming well. And uh, yeah. I don't have anything to add, as I said. I'm just... It was surprising. Um, yeah, new Eldar Codex apparently on the way. I'm curious what's going to happen there. I really hope they, they remove that rendering, the rend, how everything has rend in it. I think it will. I think they're going to remove that, because that's way too powerful. Of course, Eldar have always been a very... Because it's Phil Kelly's baby. Um, Eldar have always been a very... No, they've, they've had strong waves, for sure. Wave serpents. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see. Eldar are, by, in my opinion, the strongest army at the moment, so we'll see what happens with them. If they get brought to a 7th edition balance, I would not be upset, frankly, because they're they're powerful. And, like, when I went to the LVO, it was almost entirely Eldar and or Imperial Knights, but a lot of, a lot of Eldar. And it just, if you go to a competitive environment and there's a lot of repetition, you know something is imbalanced. Of course, 40k is not the most balanced game, but neither is really like War Machine. I would argue War Machine is not extremely balanced either. People always debate with me on that, but I don't believe it is. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm just mixing the glue. And good to go. So, uh, yeah, I just... I think it'd be good if they got balanced to the seventh edition standard right now because they are really powerful in sixth. Plus, they're gonna get a new formation, right? Or a bunch of formations. Sorry, they're gonna get a new detachment. I mean, or a bunch of formations. And now the big thing, though, that that it will prevent is a bunch of Eldar players running around with uh, objective secured, because pretty much every, uh, pretty much every codex has made a detachment rule that's better than the. Combined arms detachment for that army. Like, Necrons is just unbelievably better. Grey Knights, unbelievably better. You know? So, why would you take the standard if you can take this, if you have the option to? You know? And, uh, that's kind of it. The reason why I dilute my glue is that it doesn't, it's not as thick. When you put it on, it's much thinner. And that way, it, uh, decreases, you know, it increases the surface area to volume ratio of the glue so that it just bonds in a nice thin amount with the snow. And, um, yeah. What am I saying? What else? My motorcycle died. And that's unfortunately one of the what, the hardship I was talking about earlier financially. It's just kind of like, you know, with cars as well. Cars and motorcycles and anything really. There's always that point where you... Um, and I've been, I've been saving up money. Not a lot. I've been putting aside a little bit each month for new computer parts. Because right now my computer is really not doing too well. And... Uh, and unfortunately I hit that wall where a bunch of little things need to be... Hmm. A bunch of little things need to be done on the motorcycle. Um, right now. A bunch. And it was a bunch of things combined that led to my problem with the motorcycle. So I have to get all of them fixed before it can be caught on the road again. And it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's more than I thought I'd spend on my next computer. And I wasn't even going to build a computer in time soon. I was just going to put a few replacement parts into my... I was thinking of, like, you know, upgrading my uh, my processor. Because I thought it might be my processor. Or my video card. So... There we go. Whee! 
I always thought it'd be funny if a cop, if cops like ever raided my uh, workshop, they'd find all these substances that kind of look uh, a little crisp, uh, you know, a little uh, illegal. Let's just say that. I'd be like, don't sniff that, sir. It's not good for you. But now there's the other thing that they thought it would be. I guess. But yeah. So now I'm gonna have to put money towards it. My motorcycle stuff. And yeah. One day, as I was saying, I just, I want to make videos and it's just, it's getting annoying that, um, like this week, for example, my videos have been filmed for days, but it's just rendering, right? I, this battle report that I'm putting out for free this week, both parts are 40 minutes long and I've been breaking up battle reports into twos and I decided I didn't, I didn't want to. I debated with a long, for a long time on this one particular battle report because I was like, should I break it up four parts? And like four parts is getting a little excessive now these days. So I broke it to two. But the only problem is those two videos are freaking long. They're 40 minutes, right? So I started rendering one last night. It was last night and it's still rendering right now. So part one will be up today and part one will be up, part two will be up tomorrow because the rendering is just stupidly long. Yeah. Oh. So. That's why there hasn't been a battle report up yet. And today is Painting with Jay. The thing is, I render Painting with Jay's on a different computer because they require little to no editing. And I can get away with a, a different software. This one will be up tonight as well because I don't need to use it. The problem is I, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a very uh, RAM intensive and processor intensive program. And... You can only have one window open at a time. So I can't start part two of this battle report, even editing it, until part one is completely rendered. So, one day, one day people, that's it. Patreon, if you don't want to, no problem, no pressure. I don't, this isn't just a plea for more money or anything, I just want to be real with y'all. And, uh, I don't want to sound gangsterish when I said that. That sounded a little gangsterish for some reason. I think my wife's getting home right now. See, if this was filmed later, I could have maybe gotten her to paint with me. I don't think she's supposed to be home for another hour. I could be wrong. Maybe she got out early. Um, it was pretty funny last week when she spilled everything so many times. Some snowflock. If I'm a little bored with this base, I'm going to think about this base afterwards. And if it's a little bit more boring, if it's too boring for me with just the snow, I'll probably add maybe a little bit of dead grass. Or maybe some tufts. Grass. To maybe bring up the base a little bit in interestingness. The other option is maybe selling an army, which I don't think I'm going to do. I debated about that because I realized, you know, how much money do I have in, in armies here? But I'm not going to sell any armies. I love them too much. And also they're all like my babies. Which one would I sell? I don't know. Huh. That's it. Look at that. So the bases are done. What do I do now, Davey? <laughs> well, maybe I'll work on the next base of, uh, what else do I have to base here? Um, oh, I'll work on him. Here's an orc boy, not a boy, a pain boy. Now he's not for my army, he's actually for a good friend of mine. Um, I'm painting it for free for him. So we, I've had a good time painting him. And so if you check out, uh, I put pictures of them on Facebook and stuff, but uh, what color should I do? Yeah, we'll do, do rock, dusty ground. Um, I'll base him, get him looking good. And all the Tyranids are looking good. 
I finished my harpy from last week. So that's pretty cool. This month, you know, last few weeks, it's cool. Like I have a, a Dimacuron now, a Harpy. Uh, next will probably be a Toxicrine. I should probably build my Toxicrine in the next week and get him all done and nice and, and ready for uh, for battle reports. Mm, not a big fan of this brush. It's too... I don't know. Maybe I have to clean up the bristles. Uh, let's check. Let's switch up brushes. Oh, here it is. Hey, Adam. You missed a spot. Um, yeah. That's life. There we go. Better brush. There we go. Went to Walmart today. After my other work, I bought some sticky tack. Because of my sticky tack on these things. Look at that. Blue new, blue tack. Maybe I shouldn't shake so insanely. I actually witnessed, like, if any of those people have gone to Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen is, is a ice cream shop. You also know what Dairy Queen is, I'm guessing. But I don't know if they have Dairy Queen in, like, Britain. I guess they do. Uh, Dairy Queen, when they, they make a blizzard, they always turn it upside down. And I've witnessed twice in my life where blizzards fall out. One of them was in the drive thru, it was awesome. But they fall out of the cups, and I just I shouldn't do that. I guess because I'm tempting fate. But uh, my models were falling off, so I went and bought some more sticky tech or blue tech. This is officially blue tech, but sticky tech is another good one. Poster tech, they also call it. Yeah, and so this model's just for a good friend, who uh, I asked me, you know, didn't even ask me to. I just I'm painting up for him because uh, he's a good guy, he likes people. And I like to, I've been, I've always been, let's start talking about this. I've always been the type of person that until quite recently, I've always done things on my own. I'm a, I'm a very independent person. Um, I, I work alone. I like to do things alone. I'm, I'm, I'm just that kind of guy. Now it doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not friendly or anything. Obviously I'm a people person as well, but I just, when it comes to work, I hate asking for help. I hate asking for favors. And whenever I get favors, I always feel unworthy, which is probably, you know, my humility of this channel. You know, I always feel like I'm always thankful for my viewers, and I, I'm never going to lose that because my head will never get too big. You know, I'm, I don't think it ever will. Um, and I'm always thankful for my viewers. You people are amazing. And it really blows my brain that there's so many people in the world who take time out of their days just to see my work, and see what I'm doing, and listen to me ramble while painting. It just, it, it, it really blows my brain. But um, until recently, like, until, I, I've always liked to do things on my own. And since leaving Mini Wargaming, I'm trying to accept help whenever people are willing to give it. You know, a couple years ago, I would never have created a Patreon account. Because I'm like, if it's meant to be, I'll work hard. And, and even with the warp, I was like, okay, but at least with the warp, I am I'm charging people, but I'm working hard. Like, there's 200 videos in the warp. So, okay. And if people don't have the money or don't want to watch the warp, awesome. I will still bust my butt to, um, to get free content out there. But uh, there have been a couple people, and I'm not going to really, I don't want to bring up their names all the time. There's, they know who they are, and I thank them all the time. There's been a couple people who have just been amazing. And, and not a couple. There's been a bunch of people that have been amazing. And just really helped me out. And, and given me some guidance and some help. And, and just been awesome friends when I needed it. And, and for those people, I thank them. So every now and then, I like to just turn around and do something like this. Where my friend doesn't even know that this model is being painted for him and and he is going to just probably get it in the mail sometime you know and it'll hopefully cheer his day up as much as he's helped me you know and obviously this is my pretty much my 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 standard you know high tabletop standard so it'll look awesome in his army he's a good he's a pretty good painter as well but uh, he'll really appreciate what I did for him, you know, and that's the thing. I just like to pay it forward every now, pay it back slash forward every now and then because, as I said, I don't, I don't feel, 
I, I don't walk around with my hand open in life. I don't believe in that. I was, I was not raised to do that. But occasionally, sometimes you can't make it on your own, like the, uh, the U2 song says. And that's kind of been it. And I've realized that sometimes. And, like, yeah. Especially with a week like I'm having right now. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, what else? Um, the Plasma Obliterators came out this week. Um, now, people are, this is one of the things. Now, I'm obviously, I'm still, I love 40K, right? But sometimes GW does things that I'm like, ah, don't be silly, GW. And sometimes it's these limited releases of this amazing assault, uh, Stronghold Assault fortifications. And it's happened three times in history so far. Uh, well, like the first time that the um, that the Void Shield generators came out, or well, the only time I guess they came out. But uh, yeah, you know, it just it really messes with people because what they do is they do a very limited release, very limited uh, release of these models, and and. But it, what it does is it add, it goes around the world, and North America is kind of one of the last country last countries, obviously, because North America is a country. Um, Canada and the U.S. are kind of like the last couple to get access to these websites, and also the stock levels seem to be quite low for Canada and the U.S. based on the demand. So by the time it gets to like pre um, to pre sales for these items. Um, they're already sold out, you know, and then it sucks. Like, and it happened with the void shield generator, and it happened, of course, with the uh, the plasma obliterators. You know, by the time they got, and it's happened a lot of time with it happened with the data cards at first, where if you didn't go to the website um within like an hour of the data cards being available online you didn't get a data card for the army and it happened with me with gray knights i missed the gray knight deadline and the and my local store wasn't able to get any cards and it happened with me with um space hawk you know and it just happens sometimes and it's unfortunate but i just it it makes it me it, it blows my brain a little bit why they would release intentionally such small amounts because if they did double the models they're still going to sell them all look at him he looks good so look at him and the reason why i went with that is just it matches my, my friend's stuff so oh, i'm out of stuff to do um here we go next one good i'm being efficient i love these hours of power that was a, that was insane here's my model by the way Pretty much my standard tabletop level. Kaka. My harpy's done. So I'll take my harpy off his base. Put him over there. And I'll just work on his base. Pretty boring. Let's fix it. This is fun. Getting stuff done with Jay. Um, so what do I need for this one? My three sands. So I'm always thankful, and I will always be thankful for my my supporters, because I just I, it it blows my brain when people. The the weirdest thing is having people invested in you. It really feels weird because, I don't consider myself a a celebrity or something, but it just it 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 took a while to get used to people knowing my name wherever when I went to conventions. But. Uh, this is one of those fun jobs that people get to see what you do. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of other jobs that are probably more important in the world. Firefighters and cops and ambulance drivers. But no one sees them unless you're really in an emergency. And this is just one of those cool jobs that people see. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm just, it's rambling. It's always rambling. But I love it. So I gotta get more sand. This is my favorite sand. It's large granule sand. I gotta go buy more. I think I got this from, I believe I got it from Meeple Mart. So, I'm going to sand my bases now. 
That's good. So what I like to do with my bases, of this size at least, is do a good sprinkling of this large granule sand. Like that. That's about as much as I want to use. Because I really want to just create an interesting texture on the base. And then I go in with my middle granule sand. And dump it on. Which, this will fill up most of the gaps, but not all the gaps. Boom. Dump it out. Good. See, now you get that. So you still some white patches. And then we're just going to fix. Just move it all to the, past the edges. That's the only downside to, to watering down your glue is that sometimes it spills out words off, your, off the base. And I'm going to take this granule sand, put it back in the container, of course, and then I'm going to use my small granule sand to complete it. And it just fills in all those little gaps again. And uh, as you can see, it's a compile. Like This is just a huge composite of sand now. Put that over. Wait a couple seconds. Look at that. And it's going to have an interesting texture. So, plus it weighs down the base, comes in rock, which is great if you're having these large bases that have to weigh down the miniatures. So, and we're going to continue forward, doing that around the base. So, yeah, I love making videos. I, I'm spoiled, and that's why, I gotta, that's why it keeps me humble. I feel uh, crazily spoiled a lot of the time. Because very few people spend a lot of time in their day doing what they love. And my jo I hate my other job. I'll admit that. I know. But um, I get to come home. Like on a day like today, I had a, such a bad day at work. Such a bad day. And um, I get to come home and paint and talk to you all. Hey, Greenleaf. Yeah, you still didn't fix that spot. So, um, yeah, I just... I get to come home and I paint and I, I work on models and it it's this is my my place of zen it really is and it you guys are my my friends in my place of zen and my confidants you know and and it's cool you know I get to this is this is the the best part of my day other than chilling with my wife as well painting with my wife was awesome last week I had to submit that that was awesome it's like yeah. I don't know what to say, but it was awesome. Um, it's cool having a paint with me. And, yeah, so I can't complain. You know, as I said, I can't complain. But, uh... <laughs> I don't more sand. All these large bases. That's my standard. Um, I've been really thinking about my standard painting a lot lately in relative in relation to a lot of other people's standards because I've been getting to chill with a lot with some really, really talented painters lately. And um, I'm not a really, really talented painter. I like painting, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. You know, I'd, I'd say I'm a 6.5 or something, or a 7 out of 10. But I'm chilling with guys that are like, and girls, obviously, because girls can paint really well as well. But I'm chilling with people that can paint. That are, they're like 9.5s out of 10, and, and 9.7s out of 10. And uh, very, very talented artists. They, and it's been really making me rethink the way I paint. And, and the way I do things, and I've learned a bit from them, and it's cool, and I'm, I'm going to improve my painting, I think. But then, just by painting, I improve my painting. That's the cool thing about painting. I've never said painting so much in one sentence, painting, painting, painting. But, um, painting. Painting, painting, painting. I feel like Neil Peart 
when he uh, accepted the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm re I'm just thinking about the way I approach miniatures, and I've been thinking about my standard, and I define myself, and I think this is really fair. I'm a high tabletop guy. Because tabletop is a standard, and I'm a high tabletop guy. I, I've been comparing my work, and I've been asking people. Like, I, I've been gotten a chance to meet a lot of commission painters and stuff. And I know how to compare my work to other places, like Den of Imagination and uh, Blue Table. And, and I think I'm a high tabletop guy. Because this model, for example, the one I just painted for my friend, he looks great. Like Each color has many colors into it. Uh, he looks great. It's smooth. But this isn't going to win me any awards, you know. Maybe a nice looking army or something, but you know, it's not going to win best. It's not going to win a golden demon. It's not going to win a slayer sword. It's not going to win a crystal brush. Uh, even my high, like the model I was most proud of, didn't even qualify for pictures at the crystal brush. So you know what I mean? Like it's that's not my my niche. My niche is smaller. But maybe one day I would love to get it to that high level. Still teach at probably a lower level because that's where most people who need to be taught are. But, um, you know, and the thing is, eventually, I, this is always, I always debate about this. What am I going to do? Eventually, I'm going to, I should stop making episodes called Miniature Painting 101, because people have, you know, I brought this up as well. It's getting to the point now where I've made 100, like, uh, I'm at, I just filmed Part 83. Uh, part 81 went up for free this week by accident, and... Uh, sorry, part, and then part 54 is out for free. So, that's a lot of tips. But the thing is, it, it's still a course. And it's most things I teach are relatively basic. Or, or inter, I'd say maybe low intermediate. So I'm okay with still calling it Miniature Painting 101. And there have been some great suggestions. Somebody said I should call it Miniature War Painting. Um, but I looked that up and there was another channel of that, unfortunately. And my phone's going off. So I'm going to pause for just a second. And sorry, I'm back. Uh, I'm going to call it soon, I guess, because we're already at 45 minutes as well. And the stuff's done. i got to let this now dry for a little bit. It's all good and done. And uh, that'll be painted in the future. So then I'm done that model. That's cool. So these three big guys alone add up to like 600-something points. Of painted Tyranids. Which is good. I'm glad these Tyranids are getting painted up because they a lot of them I've had in boxes for a long time. Not the Diamond Care, but still. These other guys. And it's nice to have actually models, you know, painted up and looking good. Uh, I'll spend the last few minutes of this painting with Jay to uh what should I do? Maybe I'll work on a little bit on another model that I'm painting for someone. There. Stick to base. Um, where did my other guy go? Oh, he's right here. So we'll work on her. An epic iris. She's pretty cool. Um, epic iris is a pretty crazy solo for. Um, mercenaries she is a an elf so technically she's like retribution basically and she she has a lot of her rules benefit retribution more than other factions like there's an, an iris three so a third version of iris and she um she's only in faction for retribution so she can only really be brought with them so Quick shade to her. It's really cool. I definitely feel like my paintings improved over the last year or so. Ever since living mini wargaming, I've had a chance to paint a lot more. And look at her; she looks pretty good so far. And Rubik's leaving. So look at that; she has a shade now. This is good. It's been a productive painting with Jay. Cheered me up. All is good. Wife's on the way home. 
So I should probably end it here. Let's end it here, because we're at, yeah, we're about 50 minutes. So it's been a good painting with Jay, and I got some stuff done, I got the bases done, so you get to see these guys in future videos. He'll be in a future battle report. My Flyrant, probably in a future battle report, instead of my other one that I usually use. So it'll all be good. So let's end here. So as always, thank you very much for watching this episode of Painting with Jay. I hope you got stuff done too, and painted along and had a great time. That's what matters with Painting with Jay. Exactly, getting stuff done, cheering yourself up, getting work done, feeling good at the end of the day, by a sense of accomplishment, all that's good. I'm sorry for complaining about my day, it's just, you know, it's all good, life goes on. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode. Please uh, comment in the comment section down below for what you thought, and uh, hope you got stuff done as well. And thank you very much for painting along with me. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.